Groups and components provide context for what you're modeling. You see, SketchUp is very basic in terms of how it really works. It just thinks of geometry as a collection of edges. And wherever you have a closed loop of edges, it automatically generates a face. So SketchUp doesn't really understand that these are two separate objects. We understand that as people, but we need to build that intelligence into the model by turning these into groups or components. Groups are the simpler of these two types. So we'll examine groups first. I'll triple click to select all connected faces and edges, and then I'll move this over from the endpoint here, and I'll place it along this edge. I'll deselect, and you can see something funny happened. Right here, these profile edges are not bold. That means that they are internal edges on this face. In X-ray mode, you can see that better. So we've actually interfered with this box by bringing this hexagonal prism over and placing it on the edge. Normally that's a good thing, but if we wanted to keep these objects separate, we should group them first. So I'm going to undo, triple click here again, and press Command G to create a group. Notice there's a bounding box surrounding the object, indicating that it is an object now, and all of its edges and faces are protected within the container. If I move it over in the same way, and attach it to the edge here, it no longer interferes with the box. These edges remain bold to indicate that they are the outer borders of this object. I can then move this away. No harm done. You can edit what's in a group by double-clicking on it. It opens, and you can see that the bounding box expands just as a visual representation that you're working inside this container. You can hide the rest of the model by pressing Shift-G if you want to. Otherwise, press Shift-G to toggle back into this mode where everything else is faded out. Remember, in Model Info, you can set this behavior right here, whether you want to fade the rest of the model and how much, or whether you want to hide it. When the group is open, I can make changes to the edges and faces using whatever modeling tools I see fit. And when I'm done, I can click off to the side to close the group. Let's get some more info on the group by opening up Entity Info. Press Command-I to do that. I'll triple-click on this collection of faces and edges to see that we just have the layer and we have a hidden checkbox here. The group is a little bit different. We have an optional name here. I'm just going to call this Hexagon, for lack of a better name, and I'll press Return. The down arrow reveals a few extra items that are associated with a group. Of course, I can hide it. That's equivalent to pressing H. I can also lock the group. Locked groups and components appear with a red bounding box, and that means that you can't edit them. I can double-click here, but it doesn't let me open it. So locking a group or component doesn't protect your intellectual copyright. It merely provides an additional layer of protection for what's inside the container. You can always come back and unlock it here, like that. And these choices are also available in the right-click menu. I can go ahead and lock or unlock, just the same. I usually won't bother to name a group unless I have a couple of similar groups that I want to differentiate. I'll just make another group off to the side here. And this time I'll make it a pentagon. And just pull it up. Triple-click to select all connected and press Command-G to turn it into a group. This time I won't name it. Let's take a look at the outliner. The outliner shows all the contextual structures in your model, namely groups and components. Groups are represented by these black boxes. So we have a generic group that's just called group because I didn't bother to name it. And we have this other group called hexagon. I can go ahead and double click on a group to open it for editing right here in the outliner. Click on the symbol again to close the group. So double clicking on the symbol opens the group for editing. Clicking again closes it. Clicking on the word allows you to rename the group. You can select multiple groups by dragging out a selection here in the outliner. And you can create nested groups and components by dragging one structure into another. Now the hexagon is contained within the group. I can go in here and you'll see now, because the bounding box surrounds both objects. I can work on the group itself by repositioning the contents. 
the bounding box automatically expands. Or I can actually go into the hexagon here by double-clicking on the symbol, and I can make some type of modeling change to it. Clicking on the parent group symbol closes both structures. Now let's say I want the hexagon to be on the same level as its parent. I'll drag the hexagon symbol onto the file symbol, and now they're peers. This time, I'll drag the group into the hexagon to create the opposite type of nesting. Let me just show you, if I select this, right-click, and choose Explode, we get rid of the top structure. The nested structure remains. I can then select it independently and explode it a second time to get rid of the nested group.